This slide demonstrates the disadvantages of subcrestal placement of implants. While this can be done with any two-piece implant, the Morse taper connection of the ankylos and bicon implants often requires subcrestal placement in order to drop the height of contour of the abutment below the soft tissue for aesthetics. This is because their friction fit abutments emerge from the implant as an narrow post and require several millimeters of length to create an acceptable emergence profile. Subcrestal placement sacrifices at least two millimeters of crestal bone support and creates an infrabony defect. I've simulated graphically what a more natural emergence profile would look like if an implant with a screw retained abutment was placed level with the crest of the ridge. This Bicon implant was placed about three millimeters below the crest of the bone. With this type of placement, a contouring drill is often needed to remove crestal bone in order to seat the abutment. The case on the right, using a Legacy 4 implant placed subcrestal, shows that the use of an older healing collar without a concave neck failed to fully seat. It was replaced with the healing collar provided free with the implant. A recent study by Selena et al. in the International Journal of Oral Implantology, 2019, volume 12, confirmed that placing an implant 1.5 millimeters subcrestal compared to only 0.5 millimeters demonstrated no improvement in aesthetics or clinical difference in bone loss. Doing so can obviously complicate attachment of healing collars and abutments.